What's up guys and gals, welcome back to Weekly Indie Newcomer, my name is Splattercat, today we're going to be looking at Dumb and Fat Games Coin Crypt, which is a game which is kind of like a roguelike deck builder, it draws from a lot of different areas, like this is a weird game, and it's going to take me a little bit to get it described to you, because there's a lot of things for us to talk about when you play this game. It's a deck building game in which you try to make your way through a roguelike dungeon collecting more cards or coins. In this game, they're coins. And so you get coins that do different things and you build a deck out of these coins or you build a bag out of these coins. And you try to make your way through a roguelike dungeon while making the best use of a particular strategy that you can. There are a number of different characters that all have different strategies. I tend to go with the more balanced guy because all of these guys tend to come with really bad drawbacks, but also really good buffs. And so if you like to min-max, this game has a lot of interesting concepts in front of it. And so, Coin Crypt by Dumb and Fat Games. It's $9.99 on Steam right now. If you want to check it out, let's get moving. The first thing you're going to notice is this nasty letterboxing along the sides. I really do sincerely hope that they come up with widescreen support for this game, because as of right now, you can either play it on like a Game Boy sized screen in the middle of your screen. If you have a big screen like I do, it'll be like a Game Boy sized screen. Or you can play it letterbox like this, which will bother a lot of people. It doesn't bother me a ton to letterbox it, but the little tiny Game Boy screen that you normally play it in doesn't do it for me so hopefully eventually this will have some kind of like widescreen resolution control that would be the first thing that I would point out and complain about well, we haven't got to the game yet I'll leave that for the pros and cons at the end and so this is how the game is presented you start out with your character you have your map which is gonna kind of connect to all these different little cells around here but you're gonna have different challenges different other people to battle with your coins it's a little bit like Pokemon in that regard too, where you have your coins that each do different things and then when you fight other players you throw coins into the middle and your coin beats theirs and it's just it's it's, it's weird. It's a cool little game though. Well, technically your coin has an effect on the other player and he throws coins at you too. So basically you're throwing change at each other like you're at the bus station or something. So this right here is a prayer shrine. It's a little guy who's flipping me off for some reason. I don't know why he's flipping me off. I never did anything to deserve that, but he's got kind of like that Cheshire cat look on his face. So I'm going to assume that given the nature of the internet, you don't really have to do anything to deserve getting flipped off. It's just something that he kind of does. This is my character. Down here you have the amount of coins in your bag and their total monetary worth of all of those coins. This is the goal that you're trying to go for. You want to make as much money as you can in each run so that you can buy new characters and kind of expand your horizons with different gameplay concepts and different characters that are better or worse at different things to sort of change the trajectory of your gameplay. Let's get into this right here, and this is a chest that has six coins in it. We can take two of any of these, but there are six of the exact same, so those coins right there, if I throw them at my enemy, it makes them drop their current- it makes them drop a coin out of their bag. The combat is one when your opponent runs out of health or when he runs out of coins, and so there's two different strategies that you can employ here. You can try and kill your opponent's health, or you can try and kill his stock of coins. Now, killing his stock of coins typically depletes yours, so that's not a strategy I use very much unless I've got a lot of thieving coins, but it works sometimes. This chest will allow us to take three. I'm going to take two attack coins, so those hit for four damage. These are shields for four damage, and these heal for four damage. I'm going to take a shield coin and two damage coins to add to my bag, and you'll see the value of everything in our bag has gone up, and we now have 15 coins to draw back on. Now, as you get further and further into the game, oh, we just got attacked. So I'm going to go slow right here, even though it's not going to be good. This right here is how long we have till he throws out his next coin. When he throws out his next coin, it has an activation time. So see that right there? It takes that coin a while to work. I'm going to throw out a shield real fast because he's going to hit me for six. And so you'll see that my shield was depleted and I took two damage. Now I have two of the same coin. That means that I can throw them both at the same time instead of just throwing one at a time. So we'll throw two of the same coin. That's going to double the damage dealt. I didn't really need to do that. It was overkill. So technically we spent more coins than we needed to to finish that combat off, which is a bad thing because if we run out of coins, it's the exact same same thing as dying. Now, had I wanted to get rid of those coins in my hand, I could have clicked the bag down here, and it would reshuffle, and I would get three more coins out, but it takes time, and that would allow my opponent to throw another attack at me while I waited for more coins to come out of the bag. And so what you'll see from the combat in this game is that it's incredibly fast-paced, because you're both trying to outpace your opponent, and you're trying to outplay your opponent at the same time. And so ending up in a situation where you're constantly, like, trying to reshuffle your bag is a bad thing. You're going to take lots of damage, and that forces you to do damage control, which is going to force you to use more heal coins, more shield coins, and that sort of thing. So you really do want to have a strategy for your bag of coins. And so when I first picked this game up, I was like, oh, it's kind of interesting. But as you play it more and more, you start to realize how much depth there is in the play in this game. And I really hope that they do expand the different coin types and put in lots and lots of different types of coins, because that's really what's going to keep this game alive. Additionally, I'd love to see a multiplayer 
online battle mode where you can have your own custom made deck and play other characters like that. I would love to see something like that and in fact I think that would probably make this game have a lot more longevity. So now that we've won the battle what do we get? Well we get every coin that they had remaining and for this guy that's only one coin but it is a really it's a humdinger I guess as my family would say. And so that humdinger is a coin that hits for six damage. Now as you can tell characters in this game don't have much health so a six damage coin hurts like hell. So we'll take that throw it on into our bag and we'll accept that as a replacement for the two damage coins that we threw out unnecessarily. I wouldn't have done that if I was playing on my own but I wanted to show off the gameplay mechanic in that you can play stacks of coins if you want to. Let's get into this chest over here. We get to take two. There's a weak attack coin over here and a weak shield coin. I'm gonna take the weak attack and one weak shield. Now over here we've got two attack coins. I'm gonna go for those. We are gonna get a little bit of extra mileage out of that and we're going to kill this guy. He had three coins left in his bag so playing two coins to kill him and get three coins is a very very good thing. Now unfortunately one of his coins is a drain coin so it drains two health from us in order to deal four damage to him and so it's kind of an inferior version of the two coins we just played to kill him and then we also got a shield so yeah a little bit of bad luck right there. There's another coin guy over here but I'd prefer to see into the room to see if there's a chest before I fight him. There is. There's a big chest and so we want to fight this guy she's got three coins I'm gonna play this one right here she's gonna play out one that makes me drop a coin unfortunately which is really bad I'm gonna throw out two damage I guess and then I'm gonna throw out eh, I don't want to play that right now she made us drop another coin I'm gonna make her drop a coin you see right there that made her die unfortunately if they run out of coins we don't get anything for winning and so as you can see that's kind of a risky proposition if you're trying to play the game strategically draining your opponents draining your opponents coins is technically draining your own coins in terms of diminishing your own spoils and so there's a ton of strategy that goes into this game and I like that about it at first glance this is an easy game to disregard and so over here we have a steel coin that's a really good card and so that's a coin that allows us to steal one of our opponents coins by draining one of their coins and then giving it to ourselves I'll probably take a bunch of those we've got a big shield a big heal and a big damage I'll probably take we can take six of these I'll probably take three of those two of these and one big shield and I think that's the way that I'm going to stock up. Now, as we get further and further into the game, you do try to play as long as you can. As far as I've made it right now, I think I've made it six levels before I ran out of coins. It is kind of an endurance test. You have to have a strategy here. Otherwise, you're going to run out of coins before you beat the game. And it's that's a very, very real thing that can happen to you. I'm going to take the two damage coins right there. I'm going to try and run a damage deck this time around. This statue honors the deity Kai Chin. And so if I wanted to, I could make a donation to Kai Chin by clicking on my bag right now. You see how it's vibrating like there's something inside of it. There's nothing inside of it right now. Our coins are apparently really, really excited about the possibility of, I don't know, charity to a deity, I guess. They want to go hang out with a deity. I don't know why. I My bag is kind of smelly. I think that's why they try and run away from me. I'm not sure. Over here, we've got a big chest and a skeleton. This one's going to allow us to choose five coins. The first one stops the enemy's casting and powers them down. And so this is basically an interrupt. If you've ever played Magic the Gathering, there are cards you can play as interrupts in Magic the Gathering that are instants. Exact same concept right here. When my opponent tries to play a coin, this right here heads it off at the pass and cancels out that coin. And then stops whatever cast they might have going behind the scenes as well. So it basically takes them back to square one. It's a very, very good interrupt card. Although taking too many of them is not a good plan as that will make them stack. And I'm not sure what their stacking bonus is. I think I'll probably go for... Three of these, we can take five from here, and two damage coins. I don't know, I like to run a lot of damage, that's just me. And so over here, I'm going to throw a damage coin out, and then I'm going to cancel his coin out right there. You saw how that worked, and then I'm going to throw out a two damage coin, and bam. That's going to be probably one of the better results that we could have gotten out of that combat. And so we got a drain coin, which drains us for two and hits for four on them, and then we got another shield coin. Not too bad right now. You'll notice at the bottom right now that we're debuffed, and that's how many turns that lasts for. So every time we play a coin, it counts as a turn. And so five turns, we have lower damage by 25%. That's a little bit iffy, and it does suck for us. But I think it'll be all right. And so until we get to combat, that's not going to go away. The bridge right here will take us to the next zone. And since we've tapped out this zone entirely, aside from donating to Dionys, a Dionys, a deity, I think that's probably a pretty good plan. So let's go on to the next zone. Level 1-2. This is still easy mode, but now it's introduced keys and so when we kill an enemy we might we might get a key instead of a coin unfortunately the thing is if you get a key in your draw from your bag and you get nothing else you have to play that key as a coin and it doesn't do anything it has no effect and so really if you've got a key in your bag you want to make sure that you get back to the area that you're trying to unlock as quickly as possible since that's got a big chest behind it I think that we'll try and hurry back once we get ourselves a key because I I, I, I 
I don't know. I was going to make a joke about big chests, but I'm going to let it go right now. I'm going to steal a coin from my opponent. And so we stole a coin. It looks like we thieved a thief coin from him, though, so that's not that great. We've been hit, and we've been debuffed. I'm going to go for another damage coin on him. God, we are taking a lot of damage right now. But he died before he used up all of his coins, and so we get another damage coin back, and then we get a slow coin, which deals two damage and slows down their casting time. So that's a pretty good coin. He was playing him on us. You can see right here that we've been debuffed a bit. He didn't drop any keys or anything, so let's look around. We can get two shields from right there. That's all right. Let's talk with this guy right here. He's going to try and steal from us. That's like his thing. That's what he does. And so I'm going to throw a shield up right now to get a redraw. I'm going to deal a double damage right there. He stole a shield from us. And then I think I'm going to go ahead and steal from him right now. And then finally, I think I'm going to try and close out with that right there, which deals two damage. He headed us off at the pass, but he put up a big shield, unfortunately. I'm going to put up another big shield. So there's that right there. I'm going to stop him. Eh, let's reshuffle. We don't have anything right now. I'm going to steal from him first. Ah, he stole. There we go. And so in tapping him out, we've killed him by stealing back what he stole. So we didn't really come out ahead right there, but we did win. This chest, we get to choose two. I'm going to take some heal coins because our health is looking a little bad. And I'd like some heal coins to come up in the draw. I'm going to outrun this little goober right here because I'm not sure. It looks like she's some kind of fairy. She's got little wings and stuff. Uh, do we have anything down here? We do. And so down here, we have a steal coin, but we take damage for stealing, so stealing is wrong. We have a risk coin right here, a bit of a gamble coin. It deals between two and six damage. That can be a really good coin, but it can be risky too. It can deal two when you need six, it can deal six when you need one, and so it can be an over expenditure or an under expenditure depending, but nonetheless, it can be a pretty good coin. I think I'll probably take two of those and one heal coin. We've got a pretty deep bag right now, which unfortunately lowers our chances of getting the coins that we want in some cases, but it gives us more longevity in terms of how long we get to continue playing the game, because as I said before, we run out of coins, that's the end of our life. It's the same thing as hitting zero health. Let's fight some more enemies to try and find one of these keys. I think I'm going to throw up a shield right now to make sure that I don't take too much damage. I'm going to steal from her, and then I'm going to go for a double hit right there. We dealt 7 damage. I'm going to deal a little hit right there. We've got a lot of shielding going on, luckily. I'm going to throw up another... I've got nothing but big hits right now. I'm going to go... For... I don't want to waste a big hit coin on a little hit, unfortunately. I'm going to heal for 4. And then... Do I have nothing but big hit damage left? Ah, that's unfortunate. Let me go ahead and reroll again. Here comes another big hit. But... Let's put another shield up. Just to make sure that we stay shielded. To redraw... There's four damage with two to ourselves, but our shield should eat it. So let's go for that. And so we should get a bunch of coins out of this girl right here. We got one big damage and five little damage out of her. That's really, really good. And so that should flesh out our deck a little bit better for future attacks. And so you see what I mean when I say it's a deck builder. You kind of look at what you have. You can click on this at any time to look at what you have in your bag and kind of go through and figure it out. You can save. So if you get in the middle of a run and you mess up, you can save the game and you can load it one time, I think. And so you can finish it out just in case you need to, like, go handle a chore or do something and you just can't interrupt the game. That's really nice. A lot of roguelikes remove that. That feature so that people don't save scum in this game you can save but I think it deletes the save the next time you load it so that at least you have that one chance to kind of restart they did the same thing in runers and I appreciated that we've got her with four coins right there I'm going to I'm gonna stop her casting real fast oh that didn't do what I thought it would do let's put up a shield then so I think we're about to take damage I don't think we're gonna get to the bottom of her coin bag before she starts casting a whole bunch more on us unfortunately Let's go for those right there, but we're gonna we spent a lot of coins to finish that combat So unfortunately we got a big damage out of it and a little damage eh, I mean we're still maintaining our strategy right now. What is that? Oh, yeah, this guy right here learn from my mistakes And so if you do that right there, he'll allow you to select a blessing so we can swap status when we give status I don't want to do that permanent steal on hit so that means that every time we hit somebody, we steal from them, but the chests have less loot in them. That can be good if you're planning on doing a lot of fighting, if you have a damage-heavy deck like we have right now. We can give poison on hit, but when we get hit, we get slowed down every time. Status potency is up by 75%, so we debuff 75% harder, but we lose less coin. Oh, we drop extra coins per cast. That's weird. Or we can take a random one. I think I'm going to do the permanent steal. That's a pretty good buff, and I'll just take the debuff from chests being around. Uh. This is a store you can spend, like, coins. What the hell just happened? Did you just steal from me? Whoa, what's going on here? What is going on? I'm not sure what's going on right now. 
That's weird. Oh, it steals from me while I'm running around, so I have to go fight people super rapidly. Okay. So let's go for a steal on hit right there. Let's heal the twosies. We may lose based on the fact that I picked that buff. That might be a bad call for me. And so what I want to do right now is just focus on stealing as much as I can. If I steal a coin, is that going to double steal? I hope so. Good, we double stole. And so unfortunately, we need to rush really, really hard right now. That actually had a side effect that I didn't expect. So let's run to the chest. We'll take as many as we can. And let's keep rushing. Oh, it was a mimic chest. So let's go ahead and steal from it. So we steal two coins, luckily. I'm going to stop that cast and power it down. And then I'm going to have to... I guess I'll double steal, even though nothing to steal. Yeah, that's what I was worried about. It won't steal what they're already actively casting. So let's just wait for this guy to hit me because there's nothing I can really do about it. There it is. I probably should have healed or something, but I don't know. Feeling flustered about this new buff that we've picked up. Generally, I don't take buffs like that for exactly this reason. Sometimes you end up in a weird situation where you feel like you can't win. I'm going to hit him and steal. Let's heal a little bit. It's going to heal too, I think. We'll poison the enemy. I don't know if that's going to count as a steal card. It doesn't, and so he's poisoned and stolen. Unfortunately, we're going to lose right now. Definitely going to lose. So there it is. We won that, but we're going to lose shortly thereafter because we're almost out of coins. We get to choose one. I'm going to take the shield, I guess. What is this? It's a computer. What does it do? We can spend coins to do something. I'm not really sure what the computer does. I don't think I've run into this yet. I don't know. It looks like we have to spend $70 to get something out of it, and we don't have enough to do that. A muck monster came out of the slime. I'm going to shield and try and last as long as I can, but we're going to run out of coins here. So I'm just going to play them. And so that's going to be the end of our run right here. And so as we run out of coins, we earn 1,600 total coins altogether. And that's going to be the nature of Coin Crypt. I think we'll try one more run. I think what Doomy right there is unfortunate. I went for that nasty little buff that's also a debuff. What I've noticed is a lot of the buffs seem to be a lot worse debuffs than there are buffs, so bear that in mind as you play. This is how you unlock characters at the end. There are a bunch of random characters. You spend the money that you earn over each run to unlock new characters. And so, Gunslinger casts faster but can't stack coins or redraw. Okay, so I might try him next. I'm going to put my next amount of money into the wizard. I like wizards. And so I love the artwork in this game. Everything is nice and charming. It fits along with the aesthetic of the game. And that's one of the things that I noticed is every single character is like one of these little block guys. There's no discrepancy between the block character you're playing and then like totally perfectly designed humanoid characters. Like everything fits that kind of blocky, coiny theme. And I like that about it. Let's go ahead and do a new run. And if it ends up taking too long, we'll just do our pros and cons while I play the game. We're going to play the gunslinger on the next one. So that means we can't stack coins, but we cast really fast so that's an interesting change to the gameplay coin stacking can be a detriment as much as it can be a positive so you know I'm gonna stay away from drop coins for right now I'm gonna try and go for another damage building deck we've got a skeleton right here it looks like I've got damage in my hand so I'm gonna throw it out there I'm going to let's throw up a shield real fast because he's gonna hit me for two and from there we can't redraw either so unfortunately he ran out of coins oh he killed himself by draining himself. Oh, okay. I thought that was going to be all right. We took a little bit of damage then. I didn't put up a good enough shield, but he drained himself and killed himself. So he actually burned his own health down. That works out great for us right now. Let's look for some more chests to maybe stock out our coin supply. I'm going to go for the damage dealing because that's going to benefit our play style if we're trying to cast fast. And so since we cast fast, it's in our best interest to just throw out coins as rapidly as we can since we cast super speedy. And so we really want to bum rush everybody as fast as we can to get the most bang for our buck with our special ability. So right there we got two little damages, basically we got back what we spent, which is good. That's a good place to be. I'm going to continue stacking as much damage as possible because that plays along with our strategy of rapid firing as the gunslinger. Our previous character was not, I was building a damage deck, but I probably should have gone for something a little bit different. I mean, I built an all around, it worked okay. Got some heals right there, I'll take those just in case we need them in the future, which I think that we will. And on this side, we got this guy, so let's get casting as rapidly as we can. I'm going to hit for two right here, and bam, we took him out quick. We cut him off straight at the head, which isn't actually that threatening because he's a skeleton. It's just like clink, clank, clonk, and his skull falls off. It's a lot more terrifying if you've got, like, fluids up inside of you that get lost when you decapitate, but still, he's defeated. Let's loot his chest. We get three coins from this one. We can steal coins, or we can take damage. As I said, damage build for this one, because we cast, ran because we cast so quickly, damage is what we want to go for. We want to outpace our enemy as fast as we can. Now, we can't stack, which is a little bit of a bummer, but it's going to work out for us. That guy got took out pretty rapidly. We're going to want to watch our health 
in future plays though because we are getting a little bit low. We get to choose five. I'm going to go with four damage and an interrupt because the interrupt is going to benefit us as well since we fast cast. So basically damage and interrupts is mostly what we want to stock in this playthrough. Let's cut to the right and we'll see how things go. I'm obviously not very good at this game, but you're getting a feel for how the deck building works while we play. This is a very, very intriguing game that I didn't initially like when I started playing it. It was a game that I felt like, eh, it was something that sort of surprised me. As I played it more and more, I got more used to it. I'm going to put up a shield right now because we're bleeding out. I'm going to heal a little bit and then I'm going to shield again. And then I've got a little damage right there that's going to finish the game. And so he's only going to drop a whole bunch of regenerations and a whole bunch of poisons. Those aren't that great. Poisons, eh. I tend to use these as trade for things that I want in shops because poisons are not that good. Oh, there's a key in this one. So we're going to take the key and then a free shield. And so what we want to do now is we want to look out for things around here that are locked. And there it is right there. It's actually this entire area. And so let's click the bag, and that's going to use the key to automatically put us there. I think that allows us to bypass the level or something. Over here is one of those shops that I was talking about. And they've got a grip glove. We can draw more coins. We've got a monocle, which gives us a... Oh, it allows us to redraw faster, so that's useful, useless for us. An elf hat. We cast faster, so that would stack nicely with our ability. A compass helps us find the exit. So this one right here and this one right here are the winners of the day. Unfortunately, we don't have a whole lot of money right now to barter. So let's go ahead. I do like one of the things I really do like. I'm a big guy for aesthetics. And so I love the way that when you pick things up, it adds to your character. So if we get a monocle, it adds a monocle onto your character. If you pick up the elf hat, it puts an elf hat on your character. I love that kind of stuff. I am a sucker for that kind of just goofy nonsense. Hats, you know, things that add on to your character. I'm going to throw up a shield right now because our health is kind of low. I'm going to spend my time healing in this fight. And then I'm going to go for the jugular. And so right there, that's not going to be enough. We can't redraw. So let's reshield since it stays after the fight. And then we'll go for a little damage right there. And that's the best that I can do, unfortunately. And so there it is. We got ourselves two big damages back. Great. Fantastic. I like that outcome. We'll draw from the chest. I'm going to take two little damages from here. That did allow us to heal our character, which is nice, though. We're going to fight the skeleton. And with the skeleton, let's put a shield up and redraw. I'm going to throw out a big damage right here. Ooh, we took a little damage, and he drained himself to death, which is going to allow us to take one of his drain coins and one of his shield coins. A little bit of damage taken right there, but that's okay. Two more damage coins to augment our strategy, as before. It looks like this is the only way that we can go. Not going to learn from your mistakes. Nope, let's fight this little guy right here. Four damage. Let's one-shot her. And there we go, she's been one-shotted. Now she drops a special coin, she's a librarian. And she drops single damage coins, which are a little bit weird, but randomly, you will get a big damage coin from her that does seven damage and hurts you for two. So if you have a shield up, that's a great coin to play because seven damage is absolutely amazing if you're trying to seal the deal on a play. As you can see, this game begs for multiplayer, and I hope that they do think about implementing it at some point. I'm gonna go for the little two damage shit right there. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough. Let's go for another two damage. And we got him, and so we're gonna get two poisons out of there. Let's see if I've got enough poison coins to barter for anything that I might want. Unfortunately, we we had a choice what we could have played our key on. I should have played it on that. Should have played it on that, unfortunately. Un I think we'll make use of the ladder up here, though, now that we've cleared out the entire level. The bridge is down here in this spot. So let's see if we can barter all of those poison coins into something good. I would love to get the co that right there to let me draw more coins, but I don't think we're going to be able to afford it. Instead, I'm going to go for this one right here. I'm going to play out two of those. And then let's get some of the other stuff out of the way that we don't really want. The things that don't augment our playstyle much. Or they don't benefit our playstyle much. Oh, that puts me at 240. Never mind, I'm already there. Hold on, take all of those out. Take everything out. What happened right here? Oh, it actually tried to auto-assign them for me. I don't like that at all. Let's go ahead and we'll get rid of some of these weak damage coins too. And then we'll buy the hat. And so there it is. We got ourselves an elf hat. And so hopefully, there it is. It's on our character now. Our character is rocking an elf hat on top of his... I don't know what's happening right now. Oh, it's the ghost. That's right. Okay, so I know what that is. It means we're taking too long on a level. The ghost starts stealing our coins. I actually don't like that mechanic. I wish they would remove it. I, I don't get the point of that mechanic. Let's put up a shield since we don't have anything else. I'm going to hit him for big damage right here. One-shotted, son. Get worked. And so out of him, we got a coin, we got a haste coin, and we got a slow coin. So good stuff out of there. I don't like that mechanic, how the ghost shows up and takes all your stuff if you don't play fast enough. I think that that actually detracts from exploring the game and playing properly. But it's something that I think the developers believe in, so it's up to them. It's their game, and they can make the design decisions that they want. I personally am not a big fan of it. I wish that you could disable it, essentially, in exchange for, like, a score modifier or something. Big chest over here. I'm going to take the key. 
Oh, we've got some vampire bats over here. I'm gonna take the vampire bats. Because they allow me to drain health while dealing damage. Not gonna fight that guy right there. I'm gonna hurry forward and see if we can find the exit. Big boss right here we're gonna have to deal with. And unfortunately we drew coins. I'm gonna have to go with that one. So let's slow him. I'm gonna go with the vampire bat to drain some health. He's gonna steal from me just aggressively. I think that's just about the only thing that he does. I'm gonna vampire bat again to get my health back. He's got a lot of health to dig through. So unfortunately that's just something that we've got to deal with along the way. I'm gonna deal as much damage as I can while I still have a shield remaining. We're gonna finish him off with a four damage to get five coins out of his bag. He has all theft coins. So, we may want to play some theft in the future. We've got some keys to go with, so I'm going to unlock that. We're going to open this chest, and let's take... I'm going to take all the drain coins because I like them. We've got special coins right here that have a lot of value. Use those at vendors, and so I'm going to take three of those so that we can buy stuff at a vendor if we need to. It's dark in here. I'm having trouble seeing. What does this do? Nothing? Okay. So let's hustle. We've got a shop over here. We've got, we can lengthen status effects, mystery coin bag for 150, attack coin bag. Let's go for the attack coin bag for 150. And so I'm going to go for the attack coin bag. We've got those special coins that sell for a lot right here. I'm actually, let's undo everything here. No, I said undo. Let's go for the collector's items. That's going to put us right there. And then I think I'll probably sell, I think this counts as part of our time right now. So I think I'll probably sell off that right there and then maybe one of these little attacks for five dollars we'll buy that out that's going to give us an attack coin bag bam you can see that we're getting all kinds of attack coins out of there way more than we paid for and so now our our real strategy is totally solidified at the moment all we want to do is deal as much damage as we can i'm going to keep slowing the enemy down as much as i can while dealing a ton of damage along the way let's hit him for six is that going to do it Bam, he's down. And so we've. if you're a fan of card games, you have to try this game out because I think it's an unsung hero right now for deck builders. And if they put in a multiplayer, I see this game getting very, very popular. I could be wrong. I've misjudged them before, but I like the game. I like the game a lot, and I think it really has a fair gameplay thing going on where I never feel overwhelmed. I always feel like my opponent has his strategy. I have my strategy. Return two copies of the next coin. That seems really, really good. Let's go with that. So you play that, and then the next thing you play, you'll get two copies back. Let's go with a bunch of those. I, how could that backfire on me? Let's go down the ladder because the ghost is going to start showing up soon. And we're now in level 2-1. Let's hustle. I'm going to go with heal status. And I'm sorry if I feel like I'm going fast, but that's the way that this game is actually meant to be played. You kind of want to you wanna hustle with this game. We're up against something right now. I don't know what it is. I'm going to steal coins. Let's go ahead and go with that. I think I'm going to throw up a heal status right now. That's going to fix our status that it put on us. Keep slowing the enemy. Just getting those coins out of the way. Got little coins right here. Let's copy a random coin. It does two damage. Okay, let's steal another coin since their bag's looking a little bit low. And let's go for a big hit right here. I don't think that's the best strategy since their coin bag is so low, but it's all that I've got. I'm going to get two copies of whatever I play next. I'm going to play the collector's coin because that's going to give me two copies of the collector's coin, which is going to be great for me. So I just turned 50 gold into 100 gold by that. So there's a lot of strategy and quick thinking that play. Oh, it's a, it's a trick. It's a trick chest. Okay. Let's slow the enemy down right now because I can't afford to take any damage. Let's deal a little bit more damage. We are taking a lot at the moment. We have no shields, unfortunately. So we're gonna die. And there it is. So the game is called Coin Crypt. Let's talk about the pros and cons of this game. Honestly, there's not a lot of cons to the game aside from the visual representation of the game. And of course, there is RNG associated with this game at the moment. As you can see, the presentation right here leaves something to be desired. I don't like this letterboxing. It's workable, but if you're using a large screen, the tiny window that it gives you by default that makes everything look tight and nice inside the resolution is a bit of a setback for me. I don't like it. The RNG of the game is going to be a con as well. Some people are not going to like the RNG related to this game. It's going to frustrate them. Sometimes you just can't get the coins that you need to augment the playstyle that you're trying to put forward. But by and large, it doesn't happen that often. This game does try to do its best to give you options. For example, those attack bags that we had right there. It does try to give you options for bags that you can buy at stores that'll try and fill you back out if you haven't been getting the things that make you happy at the moment. It offers a wide variety of playstyles, so that's going to go into the pros column. A very, very wide variety of playstyles. The game is difficult, which is a pro and a con depending who you are. Some people don't like a challenge, some people do, so bear that in mind. But by and large, I feel like they've got a tremendously polished product that they're producing right now. 
that should have a lot more eyes on it. They've done very well with this product. The deck building is fun, the combat is fast paced, frenetic, but also requires strategy, and at the same time you can't play too aggressively because you'll run out of coins and lose. And so the big con for me that I'm going to finish up with is that I don't like the ghost system where the ghost starts stealing coins from you if you take too long. I don't think it adds anything to the gameplay, in fact I think all it does is detract from the gameplay. Now largely, that's going to be a personal preference from me. A lot of people may not agree with that assertion. That's just, for me, I don't like that because the game does not feel like the overworld should be rushed. I feel like you should take your time in the overworld, but the combat is very fast-paced. Things I'd love to see from this game, I've already mentioned. I would love to see multiplayer come from this game where you can build your own deck of like 15 and play another player and hot swap like on a server somewhere where you can just find opponents and play them real quick because this game definitely has a Pokemon, Bakugan, kind of Digimon. It's got that collectible card, collectible figurine, collectible gameplay type thing going for it that I think it could really benefit from having that online play. Now, how they'll handle the distribution of the coins, I'm not really sure. Whether they would sell boosters, which seems a little iffy to me, that might kill the game. Or whether you would just earn boosters by playing the game longer and longer. I think that that might be interesting. I don't know. I'm not really sure how they would handle that. That's for the developers to think of. It's just my suggestion. So anyways, the game is called Coin Crypt. It is by long and fat games or something like big and fat games something and fat games i'm sorry i'm forgetting now i apologize developers that's tremendously unprofessional of me but it's ten dollars right now on steam for 9.99 check it out it's a very very cool game this is weekly indie newcomer the friday series that i do my name is splattercat i look at an indie game every week on friday that has caught my eye or has caused me to play a lot more than i thought i would frequently i think that you'll like this game if you're into collectible card games if you're into collectible anything battle games things like that i think you'll have fun with this one so check it out coin crypt i'll put all the information down below take care everybody and hi do